We can't just sort of wake up one day and flip a switch and decide, oh, okay, yeah, we really should stop burning fossil fuels. Let's do that today. In the beginning, we were completely dismissed, almost mocked. I was amazed at how many people thought we were outright lying. Scale is, is enormously difficult. Getting the technology right was a relatively small percent of the problem. Getting scale correct and doing that profitably was enormously difficult. It took a thousand times more resources and people. Do you think that the GMs and Toyotas of the world would respond faster, would change faster to what you were doing? Oh, absolutely. No one would change and you know everything would kind of you know continue on the same way more or less. And it's only been quite recently due to you know really customer pressure and, and economic pressure that a lot of the OEMs have truly and, and genuinely started shifting and changing. It was only because we started so early that we had the luxury of making some of those mistakes and not getting killed. You know, it, it's a, a lot harder thing when you start a company and you're up against a, a really strong set of industry incumbents. You know, you kind of have to execute perfectly, no missteps. We're dramatically under-investing. Under-investing in the supply chain, under-investing in refining, infrastructure, products. So that, that's, that's what keeps me up at night. It's not, not an over-investment concern. This transition will move a lot of wealth from one company, you know, one company to another. Geez, you know, that could derail, you know, simultaneously a whole bunch of different industries and slow this whole transition down. Konnichiwa, Tesla Zenryuk Channel no Taitsu desu. テスラの共同創業者で15年間 CTO を務めた後にレッドウッドマテリアルズを立ち上げて現在テスラの取締役に再度復帰した JB ストロビル氏が先日 EV への移行に関して意見を述べましたこの内容はクライミットワンによるインタビューを通じて得られたものなんですがテスラのこれまでとこれからの EV 戦略さらにはテスラで一番バッテリーについて詳しいと思われる JB の将来の技術や事業展望が語られていますので要点を絞って解説しようと思います。My great pleasure to welcome J.B. Straubel, founder and CEO of Redwood Materials. Prior to Redwood, he was co-founder of Tesla and spent 15 years there. Imagine that, 15 years as the CTO of Tesla. You know, we can't just sort of wake up one day and flip a switch and decide, oh, okay, yeah, we really should stop burning fossil fuels. Let's do that today. Um, it's, it's a very you know, pervasive, very challenging problem and touches so many parts of our lives that we need to prepare and, and uh, really engineer toward a, a solution way, way ahead of time. Right, and without that scientific or urgency, business will go at the rate that's comfortable for business, which is not, not fast enough. Tesla's first production model, the Roadster, used about 6,800 batteries, essentially laptop batteries strung together. Looking 6831 back, actually. 6831, yes. <laughs> I, my producer wrote that, I rounded it up, but I, yeah, that's 6831. Don't remember that number. <laughs> Um, and looking back now, how crazy does that sound? I mean, it, 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 in hindsight, it, it was... Uh, or genius, maybe. It, it, well, I don't know about genius. Many people said it was nuts at the time. You know, these were laptop batteries, basically, way back then. They were, you know, slightly tuned and, and uh, improved laptop batteries, but uh, string, stringing together thousands of those at the time when, you know, laptops were catching fire in airports and causing other problems. Yeah, and cell phones, uh, too. Yeah. And cell phones. It was... Uh, you know, it, many people were skeptical, and, and they had some data to be skeptical. But in the end, you know, it turned out to be, uh, you know, really, you know, quite robust solution. And uh, as far as I know, we, there's never been a roadster fire in the entire history of that small fleet of cars, anyway. Right. Tesla のこうした何もない状態から EV を作り始めたクレイジーなストーリーはいつ聞いてもワクワクするものがあります。当時のワイヤードの記事にもテスラのロードスターにはノート PC に搭載されているようなバッテリーを6831個連結させて駆動させているという記載があります。こうした原始的な仕組みがその後18650。21704680バッテリーへと進化して、この夏にサイバートラックに搭載予定の新たなバッテリー、サイバーセルへと繋がっていくわけです。LFP については批判もありますが、テスラは手放しにこの技術を肯定しているわけではなくて、様々な技術課題に基づいて、その時々で考えるあらゆる選択肢の中から最適な技術選定というものを行ってきました。テスラが将来リチウム以外の選択肢としてどんなバッテリー技術を選ぶのかについては、この動画の後半部分で JB が語るシーンもあります。
Right, and the industry, you were mocked initially, and there's kind of an interesting narrative of how people, you know, uh, talked about the company, particularly people uh, in, the, in the industry. So tell us about how they, the auto incumbents, the giants, kind of shifted their narrative of Tesla from the Roadster days to today, because it's an interesting kind of... It was fascinating to watch. You know, it's, uh, it was kind of the innovator, innovator's dilemma played out, you know, in, in live feed. But uh, in the beginning, as you said, you know, we were completely dismissed, uh, almost mocked if there was any opinion whatsoever. Um, you know, the Roadster was impractical, it was unsafe, it would never work. I was amazed at how many people thought we were outright lying about, you know, <laughs> you know, we'd say, okay, it's going to go 200 and, you know, some miles, 250 miles, and they'd say, ah, that's a lie. I'm like, well, no, it's not. You know, we've engineered it. It's, it's going to do it. We'll build it and, and show it. But, uh, you know, that, that was interesting in the very beginning. It was, you know, kind of mockery, dismissal, and, you know, that, that evolved over time. But, yeah, there was always this sense of... Um, then there came the Model S, and you were like the, oh, like a, a rich boy's plaything. Yep. I mean, that suddenly the Model S, you know, was, you know, 10 times the volume or more. It won Motor Trend Car of the Year. It was, you know, this impeccable safety record. Had, you know, obvious data, you know, really supporting it. But, but still, there were a lot of reasons why that couldn't change the industry. And why... You were going to be a niche. Like, oh, that's nice. Yeah, you've graduated from this, but you'll be a niche. It's not, uh, not a car for everyone. It mm -hmm. can't, you know, it doesn't have enough range. Or how, what about charging? Or what about X, Y, or Z? So, you know, it was interesting to me. It was kind of a, power, a lesson of really how powerful momentum and even maybe denial could be, uh, you know, for, uh, for whole industries that had so much, you know, going in their direction. And what... 創業当時のテスラは他の自動車メーカーから相手にされていませんでした。しかし一方のテスラはこうした嘲笑を気にすることなくある二つの視点で巻き返しを図っていくことになります。その一つがスケーラビリティ、つまり将来の会社の規模が大きくなった後にどんな技術戦略、成長戦略を描くのかということをこの利益がまだ出ていない初期フェーズから考えていたということです。And what I remember is like, yeah, but you can't scale. It's one thing to make, you know, 50,000 cars a year, which, you know, not that long ago was what Tesla was making, but making 500,000, that's a whole different game. We've been doing this for 100 years. We know how to scale manufacturing. And Tesla had some challenges. Yeah, so they were almost right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> a couple of near-death experiences there. And, and the build quality wasn't great sometimes. But then you moved forward. Well, I mean, truly, scale is, is enormously difficult. And, uh, you know, that, that is another, I think, underappreciated challenge. Um, you know, if I kind of zoom out on, on the, the history of Tesla, you know, getting the technology right was a relatively small percent of the problem. You know, it took a small team and a, and a small amount of resources. And then getting scale correct and doing that profitably uh, was enormously difficult. It took a thousand times more resources and people. 通常スタートアップはスピード感だけが重視されて後先のことを考えるよりもまずは成果を積み重ねることが要求されるわけですがテスラはこの会社が倒産するかもしれないという初期フェーズで将来の会社の規模が大きくなった後のことを考えながら事業設計を行ってきたことが今のテスラを支えています。And did you think that the GMs and Toyotas of the world would respond faster, would change faster to what you were doing? Oh, absolutely. You know, we, we, we were almost uh, maybe idealistic internally, and we kind of thought, oh, okay, you know, we've really shown them now, and, you know, this, this car will, you know, move the whole industry, and, you know, look at this, and then it would be kind of, you know, frustrating when we'd see the reality that no one would change, and, you know, everything would kind of, you know, continue on the same way, more or less. Um, and it's only been quite recently when, you know, I, I think uh, due to, con you know, really customer pressure and, and economic pressure that a lot of the OEMs have truly and, and genuinely started shifting and changing. So what changed? Did they get scared? I mean, you're clearly taking away market share from BMW, Mercedes, uh, these premium luxury brands, and now you're moving into mm -hmm. the Model Y is what, almost the most best-selling car in a lot of places. That's like, it's a new Toyota Camry, the utilitarian, affordable vehicle for the masses. Yeah, it's, it's an incredible vehicle. And, you know, as you said, best-selling in many different countries and regions. Um, so I think it's the, the, the really, the data on what customers are choosing and, and the 
the staying power of that, you know, the fact that that's lasting year on year and growing and not, not some, you know, fad, it's, it's lasting through, you know, high prices of oil and low prices of oil. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that's, I think, what's finally shifting is really the, the customer voice and the, the customers demanding this of other brands that, that they maybe are loyal to. Right, and Bloomberg has written about the tipping point. Now we're seeing, you know, what, 20% or so of new car sales in California approaching and, and companies saying they're going to stop selling uh, gasoline cars uh, what, pretty soon, 2035. There's no way that doesn't happen, you know, that, that happens without, well, Tesla. And as a CTO for 15 years, you were instrumental in everything from, from the Roadster 6833, 6,830 batteries to other things, you know. Um, I think this has achieved the speed and scale that is often talked about by uh, investor John Doerr and others that would to address the climate emergency. We need things at speed and scale and few companies and honestly few individuals have achieved speed and scale like, like you and Tesla. So what lessons do you, do you learn from that? Well, it, it, uh, whew, it was definitely difficult. <laughs> you know, that, that was more difficult to do both those things than, than we would have assumed in the beginning. And particularly sure. for the, the man you were doing it for. Well, I it. mean, he, he was instrumental in helping, you know, make it happen, too. Um, but, you know, we had several unforced errors. You know, we, I'm sure he'd be the first to admit, you know, we made a lot of mistakes along the way. You know, it was, uh, it was only because we started so early that we had the luxury of making some of those mistakes and not getting killed. You know, it, it's a, a lot harder thing when you start a company and you're up against a, a really strong set of industry incumbents. You know, you kind of have to execute perfectly, no missteps. But um, the scale is, is coming back to the scale. That, that's critical. You know, to make an impact on sustainability, on, on global climate, you need scale. You know, I, ideas and, and you know, startup ideas are, are relatively more common, but you know, we need things that can scale and do it enormously quickly to, to actually make a dent uh, on the whole problem. Right. So, 企業経営ではスピード化とスケールアップをどう両立するのかは永遠のテーマです。テスラはこの2つの指標をうまくバランスをとって実現してきました。その結果テスラはトヨタのガソリン車 PHEV、バッテリー EV の全販売台数を EV だけで上回ることに成功したのです。私はこれまで Amazon、Shopify と続いてテスラに集中投資をしてきましたが、過去の銘柄の中でテスラだけが将来の事業成長に対するビジョンとそのビジョンを実現するための設計力において非常に緻密に作り込まれていてしかもそれが寸分の狂いなく実現されることにおいて心強く感じることがありますもちろん時間の経過とともに優先順位が若干前後することでプロダクトのリリースが遅れることはあっても最終的には企業価値を一番早く合理的に伸ばす結果となっていますこの後、JB ストローベルがテスラの全固体電池に対する考え方、どんな野望で次世代の EV、そしてその中核的な技術であるバッテリーを開発していくのかを語る場面もあります。今回は時間の関係でここまでとなりますが、JB が語る EV 開発の中核技術にはテスラの競合が直面するある課題と、今後テスラが競争優位性を維持するための重要な発言があって、投資家にとっても今後テスラ株を保有するかどうかを決める上で大事な情報となっていますこの動画の内容が好評であれば後編も要約して公開したいと思いますのでいいねコメントをしていただけると嬉しいですそれではまた次回の動画でお会いしましょうバイバイ